Hello and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be installing a brand new rear door lock actuator on my 2002 Lexus GS300. Uh, the part number is 69130-30110 and I want to give a special shout out to Big 2 Toyota of Chandler and located in Gilbert, Arizona um, for giving us parts at a really good discount. We've been going there for almost 15 years and they always get us the parts uh, really really quickly and at a good price. So in order to do this job you're going to be removing your door panel so you're going to want to have plastic pry tools in order to do that. Uh, I have a few different varieties right here to do it. You're also going to want some rubber gloves because everything behind here tends to be really greasy and in order to remove the screws that hold the door panel on you're going to need a JIS screwdriver which is different from Phillips and I'll have a link to these in the uh, description below so you can take a look and see what these actually are and purchase them. So with that we're going to get started on removing the door panel and I'll show you what to do next. So in order to take all of the screws out you're going to need to remove two panels on the door panel as well as some screws that are already exposed. So the first panel is right here and all you need is a small plastic pry tool like this. You stick it in right here where the door lock actuation switch is and it'll pop right out no problem. The other one is down here where the ashtray and the window switch is and I needed a bigger pry tool to get this side out and you can just you know slip it in there and pry it up and then the attachment point over here is towards the in, uh, outside of the door panel or towards the outside of the door and I, what worked for me was slipping one of these pry tools in right here along the edge where the attachment point is and it popped right out. So once you've done that all you got to do is disconnect the window switch which is pretty easy and then disconnect this light bulb which is easier said than done so I'll do that off camera. Um, and then behind here there's one screw that you need to remove. Behind here there's also one screw that you need to remove. There's one screw over here and then there's two screws down here underneath the door that you probably can't see on the camera but you'll see them if you uh, work on your own car. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all those screws and I'll show you how to take off the door panel. Alright so now I have all of the screws removed from the door panel and once you've done that what you need to do is take your fingers and I recommend using your fingers instead of a pry tool or a screwdriver so you don't scratch your paint and slip them in somewhere that they'll fit in between the door panel and the actual door and run them along and there's several clips along the outer edge that you're going to need to remove or pop out. So run them along. There's some like right here. This was one that was really stiff and hard for me to get out. What I did was run my fingers up to it and kind of wiggled back and forth and was able to pop it out. There's also a clip up here that I missed initially so you're going to need to remember to get that one as well. So once you've done that you should be able to just pull the door panel out slightly towards you and lift it up and have it come out. So let's see if we can do that. Got that side up, this side up, oh that side slid back down. And there we go. So door panels off and I'm still connected by a couple wires and I'm also connected by the cables that go to the lock assembly. So I'll take those cables off off camera and show you how to do it once I've got them off of my door. Alrighty so there's two cables that you need to disconnect from the back of the door panel. The first one goes to your uh, door handle and that's just a normal pull type cable and the best way that I found to get them out is to use a plastic hook like this and kind of hook around the back of it and slide out of the slot that it's in. This one goes to the door lock uh, switch so that goes to the actual door lock actuator. This one has a stiffer uh, cable through the center of it and this part is prone to breaking and you want to be extra careful when pulling this one out but again use the same method put the hook back behind it and just pull it straight out as best you can. So I'll show you what I'm talking about on the back of the door panel and where the actual ball ends slide out as well. So we'll cut and come back to it. This is the door lock switch right up here. This is where it connects uh, to the cable. And what you're going to want to do is once you've removed the cable from the slot up here, you're going to take it and kind of wiggle it around so the cable can exit down through this slot and then the ball will just drop out the bottom of this. And the opposite is kind of true with this. So you can see down here this chrome piece, that's the inside part of the door uh, handle. And the cable normally exits out through here. So once you've popped this part out, you're going to bring the cable around here and the cable is going to come up through this slot and the ball end is going to exit through the top of this one. 
So now I'm going to show you what you need to do inside the door in order to get the uh, actuator out and replace it. Now that I have the door panel plastic peeled back, I want to mention that in order to get this off successfully and without too much of a mess, because this tar makes a lot of mess, you need to peel it back kind of slowly. And I like to tape it to the door panel, uh, to the door itself, in order to keep it from flapping back in your way while you're working, you're getting all over you. Because this stuff will stain your clothes, it'll get all over your skin and it's really hard to get off and, you know, prevent a mess before you make it. So in order to remove the actuator, you're going to need to take out a few bolts. There's one right here and three over here. They're all Torx T30 bolts. And you're also going to need to dis disconnect these connectors right here. They're a bit hard to press, but you kind of just have to press them pretty hard and pull them out. There's another one down here and it's, it's uh, tabs on the back, so I'm going to do that off camera. Um, and once you do that, the door act lock actuator should be loose and able to come out. So what you're going to do in order to take it out is reach your hand up behind and where it connects to the door handle, there's a flap that the door handle, whenever you lift it, pushes down on this flap and that's what actuates the door lock actuator in terms of the door handle. So you're going to push down on that flap where the door handle on the outside of the door is touching it and it should just slide right out. So I'm going to do that off camera but I'll show you what it looks like once we get out, uh, get it out in order to show you what you're going to be looking at once, uh, whenever you're working on your own car. This is the door lock actuator after you remove it from the door. So as you can see on the back, this is a little flap that I was talking about that the actual door handle pushes down on whenever you open the door. So whenever you open the handle from the outside, it has a little lever that just pushes down on this and that's how the door actually opens. So whenever you're reaching up behind this, you can just kind of grab it with one of your fingers, pull it down and you kind of have to wiggle it out and uh, it'll take a little bit of working back and forth especially with this piece this is the child safety lock switch that is kind of the hindrance in getting this thing out um, but you can get it out pretty easily just you kind of have to wiggle it through the little maze of the door and once you've done that you're ready to start taking this little uh, assembly apart and replacing the actuator which is this piece right here so I'll show you how to start taking it apart and we'll come back and, and take a look at what we've got so far so at this point, all I've done is take off this plastic cover from the actuator assembly. Basically, all you need to do is take out one little screw right there, and I showed you that in the previous shot, and the cover just slides off the back of this. So from there, if you flip this over, you'll see that there's two screws, one right here and one right here. You're going to need to take those out, but before you do that, you're going to want to take this cable right here out from its little slot, and disconnect it from this. So the cable should be able to come out fairly easily. Might have to do it with both hands. All right, I'll pop the cable out of the slot off of camera and I'll come back and show you how to take it out of the rest of the mechanism. I just popped this cable out of its slot like I said I was going to. Basically what I needed to do was take a screwdriver, pop it under here, and as I was Pulling up on this with my finger, I pried up with the screwdriver to get it out of that slot. So in order to get this cable out, basically what you need to do is lift the cable up and pull it out. It's easy as that. It's kind of an S or L shaped cable depending on what you want to call it. But once you've pulled it out, now all you really need to do is pull out these two screws and pull this old actuator off that's broken and put the new one in. So I'm going to go ahead and just swap them around. It should be just a straight swap and I'll come back and start reassembling everything. Alrighty, so I got the assembly all back together, including putting the cover back on with this little screw. Everything went back together without any problem, of course, because I'm using a genuine Toyota part, so all the holes line up like they should. I also plugged the sensor and the actuator back in to the car and had somebody test the door locks while I was just holding this in my hand and it was out of the door, and everything works as it should. So I'll go ahead and put this back in and we should have a fully functioning door again. So I'm going to go ahead and put everything back together off camera and I'm going to show you once I'm done that the door functions properly and that it unlocks and locks properly so you can see what the uh, end result of replacing your door lock actuator is. So give me a second and I'll come right back with the finished product. Now we have the door panel back installed. Everything seems to be working as it should. I'll lock the doors right here really quickly. And as you can hear, and see they lock and unlock with that good Lexus thud. So we had a successful repair here. It's a pretty easy job, maybe an hour to two hours, uh, depending on your mechanical skill level and how comfortable you are and experienced you are taking apart door panels. 
but overall pretty easy job no uh, special tools other than maybe torx bits so with that i want to thank you all for watching and i'll see you in the next video mm -hmm.